to you by our stable of sponsors. I've been having dreams Jumping on a trampoline Flipping in the air I never land, just float there As I'm looking up As I'm looking up Suddenly the sky erupts, sky erupts. Flames are like the trees Spread to fall in leaves Now they're On Trivier's the battle that we all anticipated, but on Trivier's too good. She's dashed away. On Trivier will beat Labonte. I never feel so loved. I've been having dreams. Splashing in a summer stream. Tripping, I fall in. I wanted it to happen. My body turns to ice My body turns to ice Crushing with a paradise Paradise Charlie black of gold Lying in the cold well, the sun shone and the crowds came out and enjoyed a wonderful day of racing at uh, Ellerslie to wrap up that Christmas carnival. And it didn't disappoint, did it? Group 1 racing in the form of the railway, taken out, of course, by Entrevier. Welcome in my co-host in Michael Gear. And Michael, you were there again. Looked like a wonderful day on track. And I, I feel something for the racing purists, isn't it, New Year's Day? Yeah, happy New Year to you, Emily. And, and big hi to everybody. Happy New Year to all our viewers around the country. It was an amazing day. It was a great relaunch for Ellerslie. I think Boxing day was the soft relaunch and you could feel the vibe of having a crowd there the other day it was spectacular and then we had a real tragedy and, and a really sad happening in the feature mile race for the day we're not going to gloss over that we're going to touch on that we have updates for you from Cliff Goss and Danielle Johnson who we spoke to just minutes ago in Auckland Hospital but we're also going to celebrate all of those wonderful wins and try and look forward because very quickly it's going to be telegraph time, it's going to be crack a million times. So we have lots of information for you uh, in a very busy way in coming up the first way in for 2022. Yeah, it is. Let's crack things off with our replay of the railway, the Group 1 on Trevier, the winner of this. Head in, further back in the field, then as they head for home is Summer Passage, and then came Gino Severini at the 250. Babylon Berlin with a kick from on Trevier. Levante still two links away. It's on Trevier right Changing up now, Levante out wide. On Trivier is the battle that we all anticipated, but on Trivier is too good. She's dashed away. On Trivier will beat Levante. Third Babylon Berlin, fourth over was Patty Just a wonderful, Rockstar, fast Rockstar. horse, Jamie. Yeah. Um, yeah, not, not many words to describe her, really. We were sort of pretty confident with her coming back from Australia and, and everything had gone to plan, but um, yeah, she really put them to the sword there today and won with a fair bit of authority. The first 50 metres can't have done a lot for that confidence. Well, Opie was confident that there was always going to be good pressure in the race and he was happy to take his time and I think that's important for her that, you know, she just needs to be probably ridden quietly for the start otherwise if she gets exposed or dug out of the barrier then you just, you don't get her back. Uh, so her pattern is sort of to be back and then close and, and thankfully it all worked out really well. She now has a group one here that leaves an obvious target, which is a group one over there. Yeah, for sure. Like, um, her plan is now to go to the Telegraph. She'll run in, uh, run in the sprints here, so she'll go to the Telegraph, then she'll go to wait for age at Tarapa, and then once we get through that, then we'll make up our mind where we're going and what we're doing. Do you see her, ultimately, as a 1,200 or 1,400 or even a mile horse? Um, I think she gets 14. Uh, 12 fresh is no problem, but 12 to 14, I don't think she needs to go any further. She's never shown that she needed uh, further because she's slow, like she's just got so much speed that she can um, take a position. But probably in Australia, she's a 1400 metre horse. There's always been that slight concern, Jamie, that one day the horses who run that fast, it can get to their legs. She never seems to be that smooth after a race but you tell me the next morning she comes out of a box and she's fine yeah she, she doesn't trot up particularly flash like that's just not her but um when she gets out and cantering she, she's good as gold so i guess the the, the good thing about on trivia was that she was not a horse that was raced as a two and a three-year-old like she had no miles in her legs she got held up a little bit and we had to uh, do a little bit of surgery so she never never really raced till she was a four-year-old so hopefully because of that we can you know we can enjoy her a little bit longer into her career Okay, just for the punters uh, watching weigh in this morning, 
all things being equal, she is going to Trentham. It's not a case of seeing how she comes through this. Trentham is the goal. Yeah, I think Trentham's a nice option for her. Um, and then it sets her up nicely for, for Tarapa. So but at this stage, no questions asked. She's definitely going to Telegraph. You've had some great mares in the last five years. Melody Bell, Avantage, obviously Probabil is still there. Over 1,200 metres, how would Entrevier, now she's five and mature, go against the big-name girls? She would beat them. I've always sort of said that she's faster than Avantage, and I know that's a silly thing to say because Avantage won two telegraphs in a railway, but uh, she's just got speed to burn. She's by Tavistock out of a go lane. You're like, she should be getting a mile and a half, but that's just not her. She's um, so fast, so can't thank her enough for everything that she's done and the great ownership group that we've got involved yeah, really interesting comments there from Jamie. Better perhaps than Avantage at uh, the sprinting distances, which is a huge call when you think of what she was able to do. And just love watching Entrevier because uh, even talking to Opie post-race, he just said she gives you such a buzz. And you can see in the closing stages and she pins those ears back. She just wants to win and, and she's got that... She's so slick, isn't she? It was spectacular stuff, wasn't it? The sectionals were amazing. The last 844.2... Um, last 400 and basically 22 seconds even. And, and one of the middle parts of that was in 10.8. Um, Opie said a really interesting thing to me last week pre-race. She said, I've got heaps of respect for Levante, but she winds into a sprint. He said, I can just push the button on the sphere. Mm. And that's what he did. About the 300, he pushed that button and the turbos just kicked in. Uh, it wasn't overly pretty early for those who like their horses settling handy. There's a very big green hand on a year. <laughs> year. Uh, but in about here, I was a little bit concerned because I thought Ryan Elliott on Levante, who's outside on Travier, might be able to pocket him. Mm. But Opie was obviously awake to that, as the best jockey in the country will be. He positioned himself to stay in front of her and it was a lot more comfortable here yeah. once you got to see that when Opie was then in a position to dictate uh, to her. And there was good tempo in front, so... And there was that moment as they turned in, which we'll, we'll see shortly, but uh, you sort of saw Levante one, and, and it was a clash of the titans, wasn't it, as they headed up the straight, but she just had that, as you said at the start, just that turn of foot where she was able to blitz them. Did you feel any excuses for Levante, or you feel fair and square it was a match? I, I think it's always going to be the case for Levante that if a good horse can dictate her line, it's going to be hard to get past a good horse. They're basically level-ish here. Then, as I said, Opie pushes the button, the little white gloves start going up and down, and off you go. That's the end of that. Levante's been enormous. Mm. I mean, she's come from second last to run second in a railway. And even Babylon Berlin, who raced on the speed, has been really good. There was a clump of horses here. There were three mares, then the three boys, and then the other three mares. Mm. And it just goes to show you, it's, it was a day dominated by fillies and mares, how hard it is you know, to beat those quality mares. Because obviously a lot of our good male horses go offshore. The thought they're going to the Telegraph is really exciting because a lot longer straight in the dog leg. So here's the market for the Telegraph. It's coming up awfully quickly. Yeah. It's 12 days away. So $1.70 Andre every year. You've heard the, the, the almost certainty from Jamie that she's going. I said to Ken Kelso of Levante, I'll ring you Monday to check in. He said, don't bother, we're going. Okay. We're going. Yep. So that was it. That was the end of that conversation. Um, Babylon Berlin, you would suggest, will go too. Mascarpone, better left-handed, will go. Sort of state will be kept for the El Menzor at this stage. That was what I was hearing last. The El Menzor. Uh, crack a million night. Crack a million night. Yep. On the bubbles is in the market there. Clearly, it won't be going to the Telegraph because it's got hot favourite for the Caraca Classic Mile, even hotter after last week's show. And Dragon Leap, who was scratched from the Rich Hill Mile, on Saturday, they are talking about freshening up and going to the Telegraph too, so it's going to rate through the mm. roof. For those who are wondering how it all works out um, after that win, they stay on the same two weights, those mares, because it's weight for age, the Telegraph. Okay. So they both go into the race on exactly the same weight as they did under set weights and penalties uh, on Saturday. So pretty much what you saw on Saturday, the other way around, and a slightly longer straight. But Pretty hard to make a case that Andre Vier won't win again. Yeah, exactly. I thought Rock and Horse was pretty unlucky as well, actually, in that uh, railway. Didn't seem to get any sort of uh, luck up the straight, so one to note down as well. Well, as we leave uh, the railway, we move along to our next that we feature, and it is the Rich Hill Mile. Mulliston was successful in this one. 
Six lengths over the field and the group two ritual mile as they come to the corner. Hypnos, after enjoying a beautiful run, is now ranged up on the outside. They turn for home from Shower Roses. Providence provides Dragon Queen out wider. Then we've got Mai Tai further back in the field. Then as they head down, Gold Watch is a long way off them at the 200 meters. Dragon Queen on the inside. Mai Tai coming after it. Meliston. Oh, the Gold Watch has uh, dropped the rider there at the 100 meters. Mai Tai took the lead. Meliston's coming after it. Mel Meliston and Mai Tai, they go to the post. Oh, gee, that's close. It's like kissing your grandmother. There's nothing in it. I don't know here between either Meliston... Well, it wasn't clean cut. You had to go via the room, but that must feel amazing. Oh, look, Mick, I tell you what, that was my greatest thrill in racing. And then when the siren went, it was going to be my biggest disappointment in racing. I rode over uh, about 300 winners, and I never managed a Group 2 or a Group 1. So I've got a Group 2 as a trainer, and to have your son riding it was just so, so special. Um, but yeah, yeah. Obviously, a few anxious moments in the room. But um, he's a smart horse. He came from behind the other horse, and 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 made ground. He's um, he's making me look good. For those who didn't see the inquiry, who did the chatting? You or Sam? Oh, we all had our little <laughs> little spoke. Yeah, I'll bet you did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I didn't want to go down, buddy, without a fight. But uh, no, no. The, um, the it was we we all had a fair say and, and had a look at the video, and it was clear to see that the best horse on the day won. The team's had an amazing last month. What do you put that down to? Are you getting better cattle? Are things just clicking? Have they all come up at the right time? Mick, I'm very fortunate. I've got a really good team around me, good staff, and that makes a hell of a difference. I've got like Sam riding work. I've got Sean Dowling, who was a good jockey himself, riding work, and myself, and that, and that does make a difference. And obviously, you've got to have the cattle. Um, and I'm getting great support from owners, so um, long may it continue. The family was excited. Um, the wife's crying, the kids are here. Everybody's just part of this experience. It's a real family affair, your place, isn't it? Oh, it is. And I'll tell you what, I've got a, I've got a photo on my wall at home. Um, I've got a couple of photos of a horse my grandfather trained called Kiwi Can and also Glamour Bay. And they were back in the days before Sam was even born. But Sam looks at those photos every now and again, and I've, all our kids have on the wall in my bar, uh, with pride of how, you know, what Pop achieved. And, you know, like I like to think one day when... I'm dead and buried. My great-grandchildren can look at the Rich Hill Mile and think, well, he's not too bad after all. Well, let's hope that's a long way from now. <laughs> Slightly more immediate. Where do you go now? Uh, look, I'm not going to make any plans on race day. We have thrown an omen for the Thornton Mile, and there was also talk about Australia. Personally, I'll talk to the guys. Um, I think Sydney in the autumn might be... I'm feeling it's a year too soon. Next, next year, I'd really like to be there. But, yeah, we, we'll get him home and just see how he is. But uh, if he comes through everything OK, we may look at going down to Trentham. Lance O'Sullivan earlier today had some nice things to say about your boy and the rider he's matured into. You must be very proud of him. Oh, so proud. But I'm an idiot, too, because uh, when he was a young probationer, he, uh, I, I bet him a 1000 bucks that uh, he'd never ride as many winners as I did. And I've got to start putting the hat around because he's gone by me. <laughs> well, you can put it around on the bar tonight. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, awesome stuff, and it's clear to see the passion there from uh, the Weatherly family, and they should be excited because a wonderful achievement. And I tell you what, Marliston is just creeping through the grades with ease and uh, looks like a really exciting horse. He's turned up out of almost nowhere, I suppose, because there's so many big-name horses in that race. We'll get to the rest of the race shortly, but what a great family affair it was. The whole family was there, and the inquiry went on for quite a long time, mm. and they were all waiting outside, and... As inquiries happen, you just ask anybody who walks past what they think. And then when they came out of the room and Darren had their hands raised, they just started screaming and, and carrying on. It was wonderful seeds. It really was. Um, their biggest win. Um, Sam's riding so well. Mm -hmm. We'll hear more later in the show from Lance O'Sullivan about, about Sam's riding. But uh, great scenes there, how much it meant to him. You could just see it, Emily. You could mm -hmm. feel it on track. Um, second horse was really good. Um, it was it was a good mile race where the horses on the low handicaps got the job done, as often happens in the big miles. Now, we also know, everybody watching this show knows that the race was tinged with tragedy. You would have felt it in the studio, Em. It was horrible scenes. Let's go through it piece by piece because I want to update you on that. Uh, Gold Watch obviously broke down around the 200 metre mark and threw Danielle Johnson. She wasn't galloped on by any other horses. So we'll touch first on Danielle because... 
um, that's obviously very important. She's the premiership winning rider. We spoke to her this morning in Auckland Hospital. She's been looked after by her mum, Annabelle. She had a four and a half hour operation yesterday. So with that operation, um, she had a rod pit in one of the bones in her leg. She had a plate pit in another bone, the outside of another bone, tibia and fibia. Do not ask me which ones they are. And she had a, a screw pit in them to basically solidify the whole area. I said, so what actually happened? She said, well, when the horse broke down and, and fell, she said, I landed on my leg, but I've got no bruising, no headaches, nothing else in my entire body. She said, it's such a Just weird feet experience. First, Just maybe. feet first, yeah. yeah. Like, imagine falling off something two metres high and landing on your feet at speed. At speed, yeah. Yeah, that was the problem. So she's uh, had operation. She's hoping to be discharged, if you're watching this on Monday morning, on Tuesday. Okay. So she's hoping to go home. And it's going to be a long recovery. It was supposed to be her semi-holiday week with her friends. Well, that won't be happening anytime soon. I, I didn't get into her future because obviously she is touted to be going to, to Hong Kong. So mm. um, I'm not sure you know, exactly what that means about her riding future here because I don't imagine she's going to need to be coming back to riding anytime soon. Um, the other uh, aspect of the race was, was Gold Watch. Clearly, he had to be humanely destroyed. Um, Terrible time for many people in racing because it was right in front of the public stand. But Cliff Goss, predominantly, is the owner and trainer of the horse. I had a long conversation with Cliff on Sunday, and he was pragmatic. He said going to the stables on Sunday morning was really tough. Uh, the horse usually sings out to him, and he said it wasn't there, and it was bloody hard. And uh, He was surrounded by his family on track at the time. Uh, he's also a 90-year-old horseman. He knows these things can happen. He said to me the horse didn't see himself on the day. He was annoyed and irritated. He thought it might be the crowd. Who knows? Who knows why it was? Mm. Um, the horse's leg obviously gave out. Now, most importantly, uh, I spoke to the stewards. We're not going to show you that footage because no one wants to see that. But head on the footage, and I've seen it about 10 times. There's no factor that there was a bit of squeezing, but that is not a factor in the horse breaking down. And speaking to other jockeys in the race, they said the horse wasn't going any good right through the race. Senior jockeys told me that. So there may have been an underlying issue there which no one can detect because horses can't talk to you from Gold Watch. But there is a little bit of bumping at the 250. Uh, Danielle said to me, look, I was trying to go through a gap and we couldn't get to the gap because we weren't going fast enough because the horse wasn't going well enough. And then the horse stumbles and Gold Watch and he breaks down. So terribly sad. Um, it didn't take long for the vets to, uh, to administer the injection to him. But Incredibly hard for Cliff. Cliff said, look, I'm not going to give up. He said, I've got a Casino Prince filly I'm bringing in. I've got an Ifraj I'm bringing in. I need two horses in the barn. Wonderful quote from Cliff, important for all of us. He said, in racing and in life, in, he said, you can't look back. You've got to look forward. So he's heartbroken. A lot of people are. He's had phone calls from all over the world and text messages. Um, brutal to watch it happen. We know it could have happened in track work four days earlier. Would have been a totally different situation. So... Very sad for them. Uh, for Danielle, I would suggest several months on the sideline. But she's pretty chipper this morning. She was really upset for Mr Goss and for the horse. But in herself, she's been here before. She overcame something similar from Ruakaka in November 2018 to win the Premiership. So we'll let her tell us what she's going to do next once, in fact, the cast comes off and she's feeling better. Mm. Well, thoughts with uh, Danielle and, of course, Cliff Goss as well. And uh, from everybody here at uh, Trackside and the Way in team, Cliff, we are thinking of you and uh, really just uh, devastating news on New Year's Day. We're going to take a break and then continue on with our review of New Year's but Day. With you I feel, but with you I feel free. We've come through the darkest shades of blue to a new and bright. Today's weigh-in is brought to you by our stable of sponsors. You're back with us on Wayne, and now it's time to get into the Eclipse Stakes. And it was a drama-filled event, wasn't it, that ended up in the stewards' room with Wolverine ending up successful. Fine length from out wide, I choose you. Coming through also Sacred Satono. Closer in Wolverine looking to warm up, followed in by Pacific Dragon. And behind these, Ala de Vesper and then Texas and Wessex at the 200. Good battle developing here. Mascarinto, Wolverine's coming through. So is Pacific Dragon on the inside. I choose you out wide and Sacred Satono. Five of the two-year-olds go to the post. And, oh, gee, that's close. 
very close Pacific Dragon or on the outside of her on the outside of it was a Wolverine right in line with them sacred Satan well, Rorden, you've got the group two did you think going into the room you were going to get that with Wolverine uh, definitely uh, watching the head on was probably a no-brainer really I carted her out the middle of the track and made her get on the wrong leg and no, she done pretty well to hang on very tough Philly uh, do you think she'll improve with that experience around Ellerslie Oh, definitely. Like, it's great to bring her here today and get a crowd, and now it's lovely to be in amongst it all. And um, now I think she'll she'll make a mark of you. Is it exciting having the potential and most likely favourite for the Karakamu? Some bloody sleepless nights, I think. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, it's uh, no, it's really exciting. It's a good bunch of owners and um, all Palmerston Knights and uh, a couple of guys from Wellington and. Well, they'll get behind it and, um, you know, it's a horse race and, you know, you know what comes out of it, do you? Tell us about the association with Australian Bloodstock because obviously um, very serious players to be getting into business with. Yeah, it's very good to get involved with them. Um, Luke um, does a wonderful job and uh, and Melissa, they uh, look after her and they do a lot of work and, um, it's, look, it's great they, um, they're they involved with her and it's, it's such a good deal we couldn't turn it down, like, no, they, they might even leave her for the Group 1 races yet, so hopefully um, everything goes to plan. She'll um, definitely come up for the crack a million if she's right. If she's not, she'll just have a look, tidy little spell and aim for a Group 1 with the Sistema or the Mantle Two Sides. OK, so just for our viewers at home, are you suggesting that if she came up shinny or something in the next week or she started to get tired, the crack a million is not the be one end all? Not the be an end all for, um, you know, like her, her career is a brood man, like she's double group two winner so far she's probably the best two old in New Zealand at the moment so but we've got to look after her and we've got to do the right things by it's just not about a million dollars it's about the horse for me you know like I've got to do my job and protect the horse and um, if she's not 100% she won't be coming up Have you got a commitment from Danielle that if you do come she will be your rider? Yeah she's put that on print yesterday I think <laughs> I think we need a crowbar to get her off <laughs> You've always had good horses around you, Roy. And is, is this the best two-year-old you've had? By far, like um, I think she's probably the best horse I've handled. Really, like um, she's just showing stuff that no other horse has. Like, just got a brilliant turn of foot, and you know my staff at home, and they've done a great job with her and looking after her and getting her through this. And Bruce Heard, who rides a track work every morning, he just said, look, she's just getting better and better. And um, we we're a bit worried about today. She was so fresh, like um, she probably needed, but we didn't want to have a 100% today, we wanted something up our sleeve, so we just kept her at three quarter pace and um, she, she had a good blow off the race and I think she'll improve again. And getting the experience of running around here, it's, it's just been amazing in the crowd and it's good, good fun. She showed how good she was, didn't she, Wolverine? And doesn't that Karaka Million picture just take another twist and turn, Michael? It's really looming up as such an exciting and competitive race, isn't it? But, gee, she's class because she was used up a bit in the run. She, you know, she was niggled long, but, gee, she's tough. And that form line, that's the form line that you want to follow. And, and on the wrong leg up the straight. So I think with the inquiry, I spoke, first of all, to both trainers. You heard Roy in there. I spoke to Tony Pike and he said, look, we weren't much of a chance going in the room, but I did my absolute best to talk it up. Uh, he almost thought he got it. So when you see them here, they don't actually... So you're looking at the two horses closest to the rails. And they don't really touch until the end. And you could make a case that maybe the inside horse was a bit unlucky. But because they do touch, and because it's only a nose, that was the deciding factor mm. the stewards told me. So And Danielle's making every effort to keep her... You know, her whip's in the, in the hand that's keeping the horse straight. It, yeah, it was a... <laughs> Probably the best horse one. Yeah. Um, I choose you who finished third was enormous after being three wide for the whole race. So it's not on the Karaka Million. So here's the Karaka Million. Now, obviously, that interview was after race three. After race nine, Danielle Johnson was on the way to hospital and will not be riding Wolverine. Now, we do not know at this stage who will be riding, mm. but who it won't be is I'd be Bosson, who everybody wants for the Karaka Million because underneath Wolverine in this market is an entire clump of horses from Tiaka. So quite clearly, Opie has to ride one of those and we can't get any Australian riders into the country. So James McDonald or whoever else you're thinking is out of play. Massive opportunity for, for all, somebody else. Lisa yeah. Allpress 
Road Wolverine in her first start, so I would suggest maybe she has it inside running, but I don't know that, and I haven't spoken to Royden since. Very even bunch. There's actually a couple of good two-year-old races today with about seven Karakamillion eligible horses at Tiara, if you're watching this on Monday morning. So that could potentially bring up a couple of horses. Then the next big race, Emily, is Sunday. As we all know, that's the race that probably won on her way to the mm. Karaka Million. It's been quite a good form race. It's been a very good form yeah. race. So that's this Sunday coming up at Ellerslie. Um, you were saying Opie doesn't know who he's going to ride No, yet? he's, um, well, I don't know if he's just keeping me in, 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 the, in, dark. in the dark. Yeah, but I think <laughs> that's, he's... That's married life for you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I was just thinking, just from my own uh, perspective, obviously Pacific Dragon beat Time Flies at uh, County, so then does Time Flies then become that form line that you want to put? Taviyama was second to Wolverine. You know, all those little form lines, are, is that the stronger form line heading into the... Karaka I've asked him about that a couple of times in the recent years because every Karaka Million week you have to ring Opie because he's always on a horse who can win and they tend to. Not last to. year, he wasn't no, there. No, he wasn't <laughs> there. And, and he said often you don't know till the final week and obviously Jamie has a bearing on that as well. So uh, a lot to shake out. We'll try and update you next week when everybody's digested the information more and we have seen what unveils yep. at Te Araha today and at Ellerslie, of course. So um, very even race, but mm. Wolverine's a class act, and Absolutely. I hope she's there. Yep. I spoke to Royden when he said she may not come if she gets a little bit shinny on these very hard tracks. And then off camera he said, look, she's got uh, legs of steel, so there's no issues there, so she'll yep. be turning up. And, and um, you can see that from what she's done over her career so far. She defies the odds to make it happen, doesn't she? Well, she does, and you would think also, Emily, that that first experience around Alice is going to make her better. Mm. Um, just on two year olds, by the way, spoke to David Ellis, the boss at Teaka, about um, their good filly uh, who's gone to Australia. He said, if we get into the Magic Millions, we will be starting. So she will be starting in Australia um, if she gets into the Magic Millions after her fourth at Doombin. I think last Brett Preble now going to ride with uh, Tommy Berry going to Soaring Ambition. So I think Brett Preble now. Uh, would be the rider if they did get in. Yeah, well, they, there was a few people who were hoping that they would get some of those Australian riders across here for the Karaka Million, mm. um, but obviously that's completely a no now. So, yes, there's a lot of rides in play, and I think Jamie's phone and Royden's phone are going to be very busy um, over the next week or so. Yeah, exciting stuff. Looking forward to the uh, Karaka Million night. Up next, we head into the three-year-olds, and it's time for the girls in the Royal Stakes and self-obsession put in a lovely staying performance to win at the 2000. Social distance, Trieste, uh, then followed by Mustang Valley. Outfit back over on the inside. Well back is Sadler's Chick and last is Miss Madison. Homeward bound, 300 metres to go. And Verona strode up on the outside here. Still battling away, Princess Lowry and home on the inside. South Obsession, Aquacator length away. Two links back in then to the High Priestess. It's now in front. Princess Lowry wants to drift about a bit. On the inside, South Obsession coming back at it from Aquacade. Princess Lowry and South Obsession, they hit it. Oh, gee, they're about to sink again on the line. Close. Princess Lowry and Self Obsession. Well, Jamie, that was a really sure tough the performance from Self Obsession. Yeah, big uh, big staying sort of filly that um, puts herself up in the race and rolls along. Like, didn't get it easy in front. I didn't want to hand up. And then the other Rogerson runner attacked her on the outside at the half mile. So to um, stick at it, it was a really brave performance. You could almost see the shocking blood coming out of the, the Melbourne Cup winning blood percolating through her that last 200. Yeah, it just gets her head down and, and uh, keeps up a gallop. Hasn't really got a massive turn of foot or anything, but can sustain you know, a long run. And uh, 2,000, mile and a half, even two miles at some stage will be no problem at all to her. OK, so you've, you've written the programme there, I presume, the Alice Classic at Tarapa or Hastings and then on to the Oaks? Yeah, so something like that. We'll just get her home and, and have a bit of a look at her. She's not the soundest most straightforward filly to train. She's very big and because of that she's quite heavy on her joints but um, we'll just get her home and have a look at her and then we can make a bit of a plan but hopefully heading towards strengthen. We don't see those colours very often in New Zealand are the colours of David Price who's one of the best judges of form in Hong Kong. That might come in handy someday. Yeah absolutely and um, uh, I've got to thank Danny Rolson for the introduction to um, to David when we were in Hong Kong about four years ago and, and uh, he sent us a couple of nice homebreds um, his main business is buying and selling yearlings and trading them into Hong Kong, but, you know, we're having a bit of fun with the homebreds here as well. Awesome stuff, and uh, got to love self-obsession, the way she got to the line. Of course, Michael, we featured self-obsession as our maiden of the week after her victory at uh, Todong, and awesome to see her getting stake success. And I, I highlighted on the show before, but born and raised at Hallmark Stud, minutes after her birth, mother died. 
Um, she was rushed to Waikato Stud to an old mare who'd lost her fault. Took about 30 seconds. They made it up and the rest is history. But she's overcome a bit of adversity, self-obsession. And I know the Hallmark Stud team are, are super, super proud of what she's able to do. We're full of drama here on Wayne today, aren't we? <laughs> no. There's no normal stories no. uh, available. Um, very odd race. They went 2-7 for the 2,000 metres, which is incredibly slow. And then they all got into a big bunch starting the last 600 because the sprint was on. And I'm not sure what to make of the form, but I don't think self-obsession's a sprinting type horse, so the fact that she was still able to win with that head of steam up, even though she raced on the speed, um, suggests she's going to be a wonderful Oaks chance, mm. gets her head down and looks like a, a real Oaks filly. She's now the third favourite, although that field didn't contain the perfect pink or Ballon Rouge, obviously. Perfect pink had a gallop at uh, Tauranga yesterday, um, amongst a host of other sides. Do you reckon she's the best of, of them? Oh, I don't know. Ballon Rouge is doing great stuff at the moment, yeah. I, I guess for an Oaks, we get a few that start to develop a little bit later, don't we? With the, the, the and self-obsession looked like one of those. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, I thought the second horse was outstanding. For the second time in a week, Princess Lari came three wide and attacked. And mm. She's the horse of the carnival who's arrived. We hadn't heard much about, so she was really good. And Aquacade got its black type, um, so black type there for Cambridge. So, by the way, last week on the show I said Ma Chand was a filly who got black type. It's actually a boy heading to the derby, so apologies for that. Back in the field, willing to forgive anything because they came home in 34.3. Um, of all the horses who were running on from the back, Mustang Valley hit the line the best, hit the line really well. Still don't know what to make of this crop. Very even bunch of horses, but she appears to be the one, along with Princess Lowry, mm. who's turned up this week and said, I'm going to be an Oaks filly. Well, up next we have a little look at uh, the City of Auckland Cup and it was really competitive, wasn't it, between the James Wellwood runners and Concert Hall got home to win. Concert Hall took over here, leads by two, cheaper than divorced, looking to hunt his, uh, st her stable mate down. And behind these Z4s, followed them by Vito Rosso, further back then we've got Starry Beal. It's Concert Hall at the 150, coming at it again, Z4s on the inside and cheaper than, than divorced are starting to warm up as well. But it's Concert Hall and a very confident Ryan Elliott Concert Hall won a ticket over cheaper than divorce. There's the falls fourth. Over. Well, that's a satisfying result, but the best horse won. Yeah, I believe so. Um, I was asked during the week, and uh, you know, she, she's got the proven class record. The other mare might get there in time, but uh, I always thought she was the class horse of the race. Not many horses win at a mile and 2,400 metres in a three week space. So, what does that make her heading forward? Oh, it's easy when you train good horses, but no, I don't know where we go from here, to be honest. Um, uh, we'd planned this far, but um, yeah, we've got a lot of options, but uh, I'll just see how she comes through the race. She's had two races in a week, and we won't plan ahead yet. You have her and to elicit, and obviously cheaper than divorce, so I presume it's not going to be going to wait for age. Would either of those mares be looking to be maybe late entries for a Thorndon or a Herbie Dyke? Uh, to elicit, yes. Um, so Thorndon possibly, Roger? Yeah, yeah. Um, and and possibly they may meet in a, in a Herbie Dyke, but um, then again, um, you know, Australia might Australia may beckon for Tourlicet if um, you know if she uh, steps out well in the Thorndon. Of the two of them, do you see one who's the better weight for age horse at two thousand metres, or did last week's Sabiel not prove anything to us? Look. Uh, they were the two quickest 600 metres of the race, so there's not a lot between them, and um, one came from a long way further back than the other. Um, I don't think there's much between them over 2,000 metres. Over a mile, I'd go to elicit uh, every time, um, and over a mile and a half, I'd probably lean to this mare. Cheaper than divorce, just ran into a very good weight for age horse at a stage when she's still developing. Where would she head next, Roger? To the paddock. Um, I'm amazed that we've got a record like we have with a, um, you know, basically um, before Christmas or, you know, a few days after um, as a four-year-old because she was that frail as a three-year-old. You know, I had to cotton wool her the whole way and she's still not um, strong. Um, but, you know, next year you could well see her go two miles. Now, when you say to the paddock, does that mean you don't see her again this season or there's options at the back end of the season? Um, look, we've yet to decide that, um, but she may come in and do a month's work and go out again. Um, I don't like leaving them out for four and five months, um, but uh, uh, I think it's the best thing for her um, time. And uh, you know, as I say, she might come in and do a month's work and go out again, and that would be a great investment. 
She's a great mayor, isn't she? Concert Hall, and well done to Joan Egan and the connections uh, with regards to Concert Hall. I spoke to Robert Wellwood earlier on in the morning on Saturday and said, how do you separate them? Who's going to win? And uh, he said, I think Concert Hall's the more experienced and she's just got that sort of, I guess, edge on Cheaper Than Divorce. And he absolutely nailed that because that's how it worked out. I just feel Cheaper Than Divorce, another year under her belt, she'll be doing exactly the same thing. That's what um, Roger just said. Oh, we need to give her some time. But also, Concert Hall's a proven Group 1 horse. She mm -hmm. was fantastic in the Zabiel. She was excellent in the Zabiel winning last year. It was the difference between Group 1 horses and horses who may or may not get there one day. Um, 228 was a solid gallop. I thought Ryan pulled out of the 1-1 one, one a bit early. But he was dead right. He got it absolutely right, took luck out of play, made it a class affair. I can't think of a horse who's got more options in this country than her. She won a 1,600-metre Group 2 race two starts ago. Yeah. Now, now three starts ago. You could put her in the Thorndon, she'd be a charge. You could put her in the Herbie Dyke, which she's second favourite for. We have that market for you. And to be honest, you could put her in the Auckland Cup. Mm. And she would probably be close to favourite, apart from the handicap factor. So she's $7 for the Herbie... This is, seems like a long way away, and who's going to turn up in the race, we don't know yet. It's only a couple of February, isn't it, It's month? probably six years. Yeah. It seems like an awfully long way because a lot of these horses might go somewhere else first. Just with some of these, um, oh, some of these might go to the Thorndon. Okay. It gets tricky to get to the Herbie Dyke unless you do go to a race like the Thorndon or maybe the Karaka Cup or something like that because you can't go from where we are now to the Herbie without a run. Um, and an interesting other horse is going to be the chosen one who ran second in the race last year, whether he turns up here as a lead in race to his stuff in Australia. But that's our job, and we'll try and tell you as much as we can all that stuff over the next um, month or so. By the way, just on to elicit, she's not in the market for the Thorndon. Now, they might pay the late nomination, but the TRB have a bit of a struggle because they can't pit horses in the market unless they are in the noms, okay. but she's not in the noms. But the push there is that they want to go, so I'd be very, very careful back in that Thorndon market at the moment because once she goes in, she'll probably go with his favourite. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Keep that uh, in mind. Back to the three-year-olds here on Wayne as we have a little look at the Auckland Guineas. And it was Dark Destroyer who was successful. And further back then is a Titoki out wide, white noise. Tutu Kark is a fair way off them at the 300 metres. It's Field of Gold, the leader. Leads a length and a half. Dark Destroyer looking to hunt it down. In behind them, Mr. J8 is warming up. Then came drum major Titoki and white noise. Field of Gold in front. Dark Destroyer starting to arrive. Field of Gold getting weary. Dark Destroyer, I think, may have just nabbed it right on the line. Dark Destroyer and Field of Gold in photos. Third over was Mr. Well, he's J8. he's a good, brave horse, Lance. Yeah, I think he really showed that today, Mickey. Uh, he, he, you know, Sam gave the horse the gun run, but he really chased hard and ran the other horse down, which, um, you know, going forward, it looks good. The blinkers went on today. Was that so he was a bit more awake from barrier one? Yeah, I think it was just Sam suggested last time he won at Matamat, and he said, he said although he won, he just felt that he, he lacked a bit of concentration. It was actually his suggestion, to be fair to him. And uh, he'd wor we'd worked in the, in the hood at home and it worked particularly well and it uh, seemed to work the Oracle today because he certainly didn't, didn't give up chasing. What's the programme, I presume, heading towards a derby? Well, you know, I, I mean, we'd have to sit down, Andrew and I, and talk to uh, David Archie, sort of as, plays a major part in the planning of where his horses are going to race. But, I mean, the, it's usually the Waikato Guineas or Avondale Guineas and on into the derby. But I see this year, I think there's a, a, an extra week apart so, um, you know, whether both are on his program, I'm not too sure, but uh, he'll tell us. We'll just safely get through this, and, um, you know, as long as he does well in the interim, he'll certainly be at one of them. Remarkable record David Archer has, because he never seems to be without a good horse, and they're not the most expensive yearlings from the sales. Uh, he genuinely has the Midas touch. Uh, he sure does. Look, he paid $30,000 for this horse, and... The only thing I'm blue about is why didn't we buy him? You know, you look at a horse like that and you think 30,000, how did you we bought him here being Hong Kong boy now? Yeah, well, I tell you, I wouldn't be standing out here uh, winning a big race like this today. But yeah, he would be, you're dead right, probably after he trod. But, um, you know, he didn't pay a lot for the horse, but he's certainly, you know, the horses that he puts in the yard with Andrew and myself, they're always good types. There's never a horse that walks through the gate and you think, you know, what's that? You know, they're always good athletic type of horse, you know, types of horses. And, um, you know, he's, yeah, he's got the Midas touch. He keeps doing it year after year. You won this race, you and Andrew, of course, the last two years. Um, how would you describe him against, a, say, a Dragon Leap, 
uh, and a Rocket Spade because he almost looks like he, I know this is weird because Rocket Spade won a derby, but he might be a more of a staying type. Yeah, well, this is actually the third year in a row we've won the Guineas here, and, and uh, you know, he's, he's by Pussier, and, I, I, you know, some of them are winning over, over a bit of a trip, and I think he's a good, relaxed horse. I think at the end of the day, he's a racehorse, and he can take his spot. Well, he, he's sure proved that today. T- could take his spot and settle and, and showed a good kick. Um, you know, the other, the other two were, were totally different types of horses. They sort of got back in the field, and, uh, you know, they, had, they, they could really... You know, run a run a furlong in ten point something seconds. Whether he's that sort of horse, I don't know. But he he seems to have a pretty long run in him. What do you see when you see young Sam Witherly riding? Because he's improved so much in the last couple of years, and he was pretty darn good then. He's become a very good senior rider to my eye. But I'm not a champion jockey. What do you see? Well, I'll, I'll be honest. You know, um, Sam went on him last start, and he wasn't Andrews on my first pick to ride the horse today. I'll be straight up honest with you, but. Um, in fact, uh, we had an opportunity to have Opie Boston on board, but I don't think Opie would have ridden the horse any better today. But he certainly rose to the occasion today. You know, like you get the, the main, the same jockeys seem to win all the big races. And uh, certainly Sam, when he came out today and he was getting on the horse, he was, he was full of confidence and certainly the, the occasion didn't have him beat. And he rode the horse accordingly. And, you know, he's the next tier of young jock coming through and he's going to be... Our OP Bossons and our, you know, our big race riders in the future. You know, he's still relatively young to be doing it. But uh, you know, once OP and them steps aside, he's certainly going to be one of the ones that are going to step up and, and take his place. Kind words there from Lance O'Sullivan. And geez, they can find a three-year-old, can't they? They uh, have had such success over the past few years with those key three-year-olds uh, during this period. And Dr. Destroyer, just what he's been able to do from breaking that maiden to the, the sort of trajectory that he's taken. He's shown he's tough, he's versatile, and he keeps winning. And 30 grand's worth of horse. Mm. Um, he'd be worth a lot more than that now, Em. Found the line really strongly in the Sartan Memorial about two months ago now, and that's when he sort of arrived, and he hasn't gone a bad race since. Fifth in the guineas at Rickerton. I think the key factor there was they were able to keep him in the trail on a very slow speed. He tended to get back in his races, so they put the hood on, and it's woken him up, got him out of the gates. Um, they didn't go much of a gallop, so I'm not sure how strong a form race it'll be. They went 136.9, which is slow on a track that firm for a mile. A lot of horses ran on well, but you also can't make the case that he's not the best horse of that bunch at the mm. moment. So he'll head through that Guineas program through the derby, so Evandale or, or Waikato Guineas. Um, not going to be disappointed by any of the other horses. Look, there's plenty of horses who can win this race. Field of Gold was good enough in front. Tudakaka finished nearly last, mm. but was still making OK ground, and they sat up on Coming the Coming back 50. from a yeah, exactly. carnival. Uh, not willing to, to can any of these horses as derby horses, apart from on the bubbles, who just won't be there. So just factor that as a non-factor. Tatoki was good. So, very interesting open derby type field. Some of these will also be in the market for the Levin Classic. Oh, no, sorry, the Wellington Guineas. It is, my apologies. Wellington Guineas. Now, Parunui Bay is heading to the Wellington Guineas, but the rest of those, most of those, won't be heading to the Wellington Guineas. On the Bubbles will stick around up north for the Cracker Classic Mile, and the rest of those will stick around for Avondale or Tarapa, or Avondale Guineas and Tarapa heading to the derby. So, um, yeah, of that bunch, uh, Parunui Bay, the one who might be kept for different types of races. Interesting comments on Sam Weatherly there from Lance. They He wasn't their first choice to ride the horse because a lot of people would like to go to Opie with Group 1 races around the corner. Um, I think the owners were keen to stick with Sam, and they did. When I punt, I, I mark jockeys as neutral or a plus or a plus one or a plus two. Obviously, Opie gets a plus two in factoring to, to gamble. You have to Sam, say that Sam, Sam, here, No, it's true. <laughs> well, every algorithm in the world does. Top jockeys, like Opie at the moment when he's on a horse, it just reduces in odds all the time. We're going to see Donis soon. Opie was the reason the horse came in the market. But Sam Witherley's become a plus jockey. He's become a positive aspect on every horse he's on now if you punt seriously. And there's not many of them in the country who instantaneously, most are neutral because they're competing against people of similar ability. Sam is in a position now where he's become a positive factor for any horse he rides. Mm, good stuff. And let's get you along to the Stayers uh, Championship final. Now on this one, Dionysus for the James Wellwood team again finished up on top.
Tivo and last of all the bounder. The race on in earnest in the Dunstan Feed Stairs Championship Final. They hit for home and Dionysus ranged up and took the lead. Coming after it, Margaret Jean, then Lowry, followed by Chicana, James Barry. Out wide, Fonga Wonder in behind them. Nothing sweet about me. It's Dionysus tackled by Margaret Jean. Dionysus being popped the question by Bosson. It's Dionysus for Margaret Jean. Nothing sweet about me. Chicana's running on. So too is Rapid Falls out in the centre. Down towards the line. Dionysus in front. Dionysus won it. Rapid Falls second. Third over was in the third position was Margaret Jean. Well, I know Hypnos is the equine love of your life, but you might have a challenger now. Yeah, I think so. He's, uh, he's only a sort of frail horse at the moment, really, isn't he? And I think another year on him, he'll be, uh, yeah, probably be, could be a sort of cup source. I think anybody who starts winning this late starts to dream down that way. So yeah, it, that's it, what it, racing's all about, <laughs> dreaming. Is it, is it a yeah. case of maybe being patient with him in the back end of this season to tee him up for that next season? When you have a trainer like Roger Jones, you don't have any choice about being patient. <laughs> he's, the truth. Been, he's been great. We gave him his first horse, I think, years ago, and, yeah, we had a really good relationship with him, yeah. What did you see in Roger James all those years ago that made you want to give him a horse? Um, not sure, really. He probably came from Jimmy Gibbs, who was a bit of a master at the time, and he was a young fellow wanting to go forward. And he's done that, hasn't he, really? Yeah. And he's got Robert and his team now, too, and, and yeah. the stable was absolutely flying. That yeah. patience yeah. seems to be working out for them. Yeah, I think, and somebody, sometimes you need somebody just to give you that extra boot along, don't you, really? And, and Robert's been good for that with Rog, and they've both really got on well and enjoyed it. With yeah. Dionysus, um, I suppose you start dreaming those big dreams. If you could win a cup, if you could win any one of the big cups in New Zealand, which one would you want? Um, being a Wellington past president at Wellington, I think we'd have to go Wellington Cup, wouldn't we? Hope it's up to group one by then. <laughs> no yeah. chance you'll sneak him down there this time round? Sneak him down south again. No, sneak him down to Trentham this time around. Would you, you wouldn't go for the Wellington no, I, Cup this I, year? I think he probably needs a rest, really. He's sort of backed up after six days here. But Don't we all? Yeah, we all do, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, you got that one right. And congrats to the Dixons after the victory of Dionysus in that uh, Stayers Championship final. Well, we're going to get you off to a break here now on Wayne, and we leave you with our Maiden of the Week. And this week, it's Miss Ella from Rotorua. Towards a home turn, this favourite looks to quicken up out in front. Great Plains is next. Further back is a like a star, and back with it also Anita Shock. Miss Ella went for gold at the 250. Put four lengths on them now from Canadian Girl. Great Plains running on, so too is Flirter. But shut the gate here, Miss Ella. Miss Ella's going to make a mess of them here and races away for a well deserved win. by our stable of sponsors. As for the effort now from Talk Time, the outside, Lord Esperanza, uh, Lumberland starting to try and track into the race, and then Winston, Town Crier, and Talk Time, Lumberland's into the clear, he's starting to come now, and then on the outside is Winston, Lumberland, the big fellow, strides to the lead now, really powers up the last little bit, Winston out wide, Town Crier the inside, but he's way too good, Lumberland by five. Favourite's been held up, Miss Tycoon Row. She's got a wall of horses around her. Further back, Owen Patrick on the corner. Monza Sakito leading a length and a half. William Wallace descending as two beneficial, swooping up the centre. Followed by Goodanya. Further back, take the deal. It's William Wallace striking the lead, a length on beneficial. And then Goodanya, Monza Sakito boxing on. But William Wallace, William Wallace is drawing away for Meg Canine. This is going to be a big win for Meg. And Brett Murray and William Wallace dash away and score in the cup by almost four lengths. Through the back, the good shepherd as they run for home and back with it as final savings. So natural goes for home a length clear on Zelensky. Three to tell you what, rock sensation further out, my world. So natural at the 200 metres. A length and a half clear from Zelensky, rock sensation, tell you what, but it's so natural with 100 to go. This has been a gem of a ride from the Argentinian ace, Tina Komeniagi, brilliant. So natural takes the cup.
Has he gone too early? Heading the chase after him now. Lincoln King to Barter. Bully Boy out wide. Sherwood Forest is looming. They've grabbed Bowden. Now taking over Lincoln King. Sherwood Forest. Hunter Pence is running on. Lincoln King in front at the 100 metres. Hunter Pence out deeper from Sherwood Forest. Bully Boy. Lincoln King. Hunter Pence is coming after it. Hunter Pence lunge. Got the lead and will win the Harcourt's Topo Cup. Going up for a look, but he spins for home a length clear. Full Fury wide out, then Olaf. Nesta looking to thread the needle for Johnson. He's onto the scene quickly, going up to Rivier Rock. And now Kilowatt looking to lift over on the inside. So the three of them settle down now. Nesta, Kilowatt, Rivier Rock. He just won't go away. Nesta, Rivier Rock trying to lift, and then Kilowatt, but it's Nesta in front for CWJ. And Nesta will score. Nesta one of the half length. And that was a little montage of the undercard from a big weekend of New Year's Day racing. And of course, that period between Christmas and New Year. Michael, before we wrap things up, a mention about the racing annual. That's pretty exciting stuff. It sure is. Uh, Aidan Rodney's done a super job of, of capturing all of last season. So the racing annual for last season. Um, you can buy it. You can buy it for like 40 bucks and give it to someone you love or read it yourself or read it yourself and then give it to someone you love. <laughs> Modelled by Emily Bosson. Yeah, so there you go. Um, here's the address, racingannual.co.nz. Uh, Aidan gave us one for free, so we're not buying one, but you probably should because... Writing a book would be awfully hard, Emily. It would, and there's some really awesome stuff in yep, there, actually, there to flick through. Yep, so and um, the other thing, Michael, that we wanted to mention as well was, of course, the Andertons, who reached a big milestone over Brian the and Shane, the 1,000th winner together. Damn, that's a lot of winners. Yep. Um, this is it. This is after being in partnership for 30-odd years. Congratulations to one of the iconic families of New Zealand racing. And this is their 1,000th domestic victory. It's a nice way to cap... A amazing, stunning, partly sad, wild way to start 2022, Emily. Mm, it's most definitely is. Good stuff and a big well done to them. Also, just a special mention to Ian Shaw as well, who, of course, had uh, Tiger Tiger, who was uh, successful in the listed Baggett Handicap at uh, Flemington. Congratulations to you by Z as well, so a nice result there. And also, we um, have just a little shout-out to Ben Munro as well, who uh, has had open heart surgery. I know many of you will know him as an equine dentist, and uh, he's unfortunately just uh, in Waikato in the critical care unit. So thinking of you, Ben, and hoping uh, you can get back a OK very soon. Michael, it's been a wonderful show. It's as been a great way to start. After a huge weekend of racing. Next week, we have a great interview with Brendan Lindsay about what's going on at Cambridge Stud, their Heritage Centre, lots of other stuff. I'm off to Kamara. So I'll be back with some Kamara colour for us next week, Emily. Come back with a voice, Michael, please. Oh, yeah, I want sorry. a voice. That's it from us. See you next week. <laughs>